I was attending the National Urban League Conference at James Weldon Johnson in Pittsburgh. Uh, and my best friend from Youngstown, Ohio, had recently married the Urban League secretary in Massillon, Ohio. And because she was young and uh, not as outgoing as, as I was, he asked if I would attend the conference with them, and I did. And it was uh, uh, outdoors, and I was sitting on the grass. Reba Wardlaw and I were sitting on the grass uh, listening to the, the uh, lectures and so forth. And Maurice Moss, who was the secretary of the Urban League in Pittsburgh, uh, was sitting by us and he said, start talking, and he said, uh, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm, I'm in college at Geneva College. I'm about to graduate. He said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm debating whether to become a librarian or a social worker, because at that time, only six uh, modes of work were available to African Americans, you either became, if you were lucky, you became a doctor or a lawyer, but it was social work, teaching, preaching, and nursing. And, and uh, so he said, uh, how are your grades? I said, I'm an honor student. He said, a librarian is the only profession that African Americans do not have in the city of Pittsburgh. Why don't you apply to Carnegie Institute of Technology, and if they don't accept us, come back to us and we'll go to bat for you. So I applied at Carnegie Institute of Technology at the urging of Dr. Maurice Moss of the National Urban League. Back to the library, um, situation. My colleagues in Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh were wonderful to me. Uh, it was the city that was racist. I was asked to leave the restaurant, the Bar City restaurant at Craig Street and Center Avenue and not to come back. A white couple had protested my being there. So when I went to pay my bill, the manager or the owner of the restaurant said, don't come back. And uh, I'm an Aquarian, so I never know how I'm going to react or what I'm going to say. And I sounded off. I said, our men are fighting in war for the likes of you and for democracy and all. How dare you ask me not to come back? And it so happened that the man standing Nick back of me said, if you don't serve her, I won't come back and I will tell my friends not to come back. And it just happened to be a professor from the University of Pittsburgh. And they're decent white people and good white people no matter what or where. But the city was really vilely racist, really racist. And many of the faculty at Carnegie Institute of Te Technology were, ra were bigoted and racist. So the school was, uh, they had one at a time or two at a time, and when I was in library school, there were four of us, none of who were native Pittsburghers. And remember when Ralph Munn said to me, I'm sorry, you don't look more like a Negro than you do. We've been looking for somebody like you for a long time. Remember, he said, looking. They weren't searching because if they had been searching, they would have found somebody in, in the city of Pittsburgh. But uh, and it had been 20 years from the time that I was admitted to the library school until the time that a librarian, a native Pittsburgh 
Pittsburgher from a good family, had graduated from the library school, but when she did her field work, her practice work, she could only observe. At Wiley Avenue Branch, where the, the Negro Branch, she could only observe. She could not tell stories to the children. It was, it was terrible. Pittsburgh was terrible. But I'm glad to say it has changed, 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 and for the better. It's a good city now. Well, Pittsburgh was an entirely different city then than it is now. Smoke, steel was the big industry, and foggy and dirty, and my aunt was ashamed to wash my clothes. She lived in North Carolina where I would finish because they were tattletale gray. The street lights would stay on until noon or all day because it would be so smoggy and dirty. And uh, um, it, it was something else. And um, I suffered so from sinus. And my mother, who was very avant-garde, said to me, she said, Vivian, you will never do any good as long as you stay in this Pittsburgh city. You've got to get out. When I was a little girl and my neighbor, we practiced being librarians. We had gotten for Christmas roll-top desks, and we practiced being librarians. So I, I've always been intrigued by being uh, becoming a librarian. It's, one, it's been a wonderful profession. Uh, right now, I'm impressed. I would have to be retrained. I was on the cutting edge of information retrieval when the New York Times integrated and, uh, you know, it became computer-wise. On the cutting edge of it because, uh, but now I would have to be retrained but there will still be books to be read because you can't cuddle up with a, re with a computer and you can't write in the edges, you can't turn down the leaf, you know. There will always be the print book, but um, it, it's, it's been a wonderful life. I've had, I've been blessed and I've been lucky because I'm so glad that I met Mary John Hewitt and that after two and a half years, uh, he took me to New York where I met people of the Harlem Renaissance and had the positions that I had. And I'm the only librarian who has been chief librarian at Rockefeller Foundation, Carnegie Endowment for International Peace and the Council on Foreign Relations uh, as assistant chief librarian. But it's been a wonderful time, wonderful life. And I'm glad to uh, recommend and mentor people uh, to become librarians.